In this course, we're going to create a video calling application for Android using WebRTC and Firebase. And for this, I'm not going to use the native WebRTC library for available for Android because that library is a very bad library. It is not being maintained by anyone and it has like zero documentation available online. So if you're going to use that, then you're going to definitely fall into trouble. So instead of that, I'll be using a library named PeerJS. This library is written in JavaScript and it is a very popular one. If you see their GitHub, then you can see that they have around nine or 10,000 stars and it is constantly being backed by many supporters and you're not going to fall into any trouble if you are going to use it. The community support with this library you are going to find that. We will create a part of this application in HTML, CSS and JavaScript and then we will integrate that part in Android with the web view. Now you might be concerned about any performance issues but you shouldn't be because this thing is going to work like native and it is going to be fast. So you can completely trust this solution. You're not going to face any performance issues. We will also be using Firebase real-time database to exchange a small amount of data from one peer to another. But our main thing that is transfer of video stream that will be taken care by PeerJS. The PeerJS also requires a server, but we don't need to code this server by ourselves because it comes with the PeerJS library itself. The only thing that we need to do is just run the server on our machine. And I will show you how to do that in the end of this video. It is not a very complicated task to do. It will probably take like 30 seconds to get the server running. And I've also created a GitHub repository for this project. I will have it linked in the description. So go check it out, go check the code and just play with it. Now let's take a look at what are we going to create and then we will create it. The app requires us to log in into it with a username. And then I will log in again in a different mobile device. And once I'm logged in, I can call Mihir. So I'm going to enter that name and click on call. And now you can see on the other side, we get the message that someone is calling us and we have to either reject it or accept it. If I accept it, then the call gets connected. And now I have options to mute the call, unmute it and mute the video and unmute the video. Here we have these two beautiful Google and Samsung phones and we will take a look at how these two devices are going to use the PeerJS library to establish a video calling session with each other. Okay, so the first thing that these devices are supposed to do is to get connected to the PeerJS server, which is by the way maintained by the creators of PeerJS and we don't need to code any of the server side by ourselves. We developers have only the client side to deal with. So this pixel device will create a unique user ID for itself and it will join the PeerJS server with this unique ID. This unique ID will be used by the server to identify this particular pixel device. But imagine if the ID is not unique and many people are trying to connect to the server with duplicate IDs. In that case, the PeerJS server will drop any new connections that have connection ID same as the ID of the devices that are already connected to it. So the pixel here gets connected to the server with a unique ID and let that unique ID be called P in this example. The Samsung device will also connect to the server with a unique ID. Here let that unique ID be S. Once the devices are connected, they are all ready to send call requests and are also ready to listen to any calls that come to them. Now the Samsung wants to video call the pixel. So it is going to tell the server that Hey server, I want to call P and here is my network data and media configurations. The server will then check if anybody with ID P is connected. Here it does have P connected. So it will tell P that, Hey P, S wants to call you. Here is its data. This data is going to be the network and media data of the S. The pixel device will now store the data given by S and then it will say, Okay, I accept S's call and this is my network data and media configuration. The server will again go to S and it will say, P has accepted your call. Here is its data. S as well will know about the network and media data of P. Now that both these devices know about their network data, they will actually get connected peer to peer and now they can send their video streams directly to each other and they can also play each other's streams. 
Hope you understand the process. It will become clearer as we write the code. So let's start coding now. I'm going to create a new folder that will be named Android call and I will put all of the code in this folder. And then I'm going to open this Android call folder in VS code. You can use any code editor. It is not mandatory that you use a VS code. And inside this create a file name call.html. Let me just quickly type in the boilerplate code. The body of the HTML is just going to have two video elements and I am going to give these video elements their ID and the first one is a remote video. We are going to refer to this video element in code. So we need an ID here and then I'm going to use another one that will be to display the local video and the remote video element will also have the autoplay attribute so that whenever it gets the video stream it automatically starts playing it. The same thing should happen to the local video as well and along with the autoplay I am also going to add the muted attribute. This will just mute the audio that will come off from the local stream. We don't want to be playing the audio of the local guy to his own computer itself. We will also need a little bit of CSS to position these elements properly. So inside this folder itself create another file and this will be named style.css. Here first thing that should be done is uh, there should be no padding in the HTML or the body. So padding just set that to zero and if by chance there is any margin then that should also be avoided. So padding and margin both zero. And other than this I'm going to have two classes in this style.css. The first one is primary video and the second one is a secondary video. And by the name you can guess that this will be playing the primary video and which is the primary video? The video which will take the entire screen is the primary one and the one which will be picture in picture that one is going to be the secondary video. I'm going to set the position of this primary video to absolute and then this is going to take up the entire screen. So width and height both are going to be 100%. And just one more thing that this primary video should have is the object fit set to cover. So setting this to cover will simply remove any kind of empty space that may otherwise appear in the video element. And now for the secondary video the position is going to be absolute as well. Max width is going to be 30% and width I'm just going to set to 30%. It is not compulsory that you use these same constant values. You can see whatever looks good to your eyes and then use those values. And apart from this I also want to give this a margin of 16 pixels. And we can also give a little border radius to make it look a little fancy. And the border radius that I'm going to give is 16 pixels. Now go back to the call.html and now we can add those CSS classes to these video elements. So initially the class of the remote video is going to be a secondary video because until the call is connected we would like to show the local video full screen and that is what happens normally that is like a convention in all of the video call applications. So add the class name primary video to the local video element. We're also going to need JavaScript to handle all the backend. So create another file and name this call.js. And now include that script in the body. Script source is dot slash call.js. To exchange the video streams between the users, we are going to use the PRJS library and we also need to include that in our HTML. So open up a web browser and search for a PRJS CDN. 
and click on the first link i will have it linked in the description so you can access it from there as well and then click on this icon to copy this link and above the video tag just include the script now we are going to use all of this in our android app at the end so it does not sound very right to load the PRJS from the internet because that would just require some internet connection and it will make the application little bit slow and the file at this link is going to be a constant so what we can do is we can simply copy this link paste it in the browser and then we will get the source code for PRJS and this is all we need for the PRJS to work so we can just directly copy it here and then create a new file in our project name this prjs.js and paste this file in here now doing this is completely optional you can always directly use the file from the link but i think it would be better for performance if we just copy it there and then include it here directly so i'm just going to use the prjs.js as the source now now we can go to call.js and write all the backend before i write another line of code i'm going to increase the font size of this text editor now let's create two objects and those objects will refer to the video elements that we have in the html the first one is the local video and we will uh, get this element by its id the id is local video another one named a remote video the id for this is a remote video initially both these video elements will not be visible and once they are playing a stream then only we are going to show these video elements we need to do this because in the android side if a video element is not playing anything then it shows this ugly play video icon so set the opacity of both these elements to zero now we are going to listen for on play events on these two elements and if they start playing any stream then we are going to change the opacity to one so local video on playing and inside this function set the opacity to one do the same thing to the remote video after this create an object named peer and this object will be initialized in an init function this init function is going to take a user id as a parameter this is the user id that we are going to send to the peer.js server for this particular peer now to connect to the peer.js server we just have to create an object of the peer class and the peer class is available in the peer.js.js file so simply create an object of the peer class and pass the user id as an argument to this once the peer is connected this peer can start listening for any calls that come to it and we will do that in a separate function that will be named listen so when a peer gets a call request then the on call event is called the second parameter is a callback function that will be executed once the on call event is called now inside this function we are going to get the video stream from the local machine and then we will attach that video stream to this call object and then we will answer the call so to get the media stream use the get user media function available in the navigator object which is a global object available for html documents this function accepts a constraints object as its first parameter and through this constraint objects we have to define a what kind of stream do we want so if we set audio to true then we are going to have an audio in our video stream and then we will set the video to true then the stream will also have video in it this is a very simple constraint that i'm passing here we can also add more details to the kind of audio and the video streams we want i have explained this part in a different video already 
so I'm not going to do it again instead I will just play the part of that video that explains this part but we also have options to provide specific details of what kind of stream do we want like the minimum width minimum height frame rate and all those kind of stuff and to specify all those things instead of passing true we will have to pass an object instead and in this object we can specify the frame rate let's just keep it to 24 and then we can specify the width again the width can be either a direct number or an object and why will we need an object here to specify a minimum width so we can let it go down to 480 and then we can also specify the ideal width let's set it to 720 and then we can also have a max property let's set it to 1280 and we can do similar things to the height as well but I am not going to do it for the height instead I will just define an aspect ratio and I am going to keep it to 1.333 which is now I will put a link to a page in the description where you can find all the different constraints that you can pass in this object. The second parameter that we have to pass is a callback function and through this callback function we will receive the stream. And when we have the local stream then we will show it into the local video by just setting the src object equals to the stream. Above this listen function, create another object that will be named a local stream and just refer this local stream object to this stream object. We are going to use this local stream variable in a different function, so we need the reference. And now to answer this call, we just have to call the answer function available on this call object and we have to pass the video stream to this function and the PRJS library will automatically send this stream to the guy who is trying to call us. Now once we answer the call with our stream, we should also be ready to accept the stream of the remote user and we will get the stream of the remote user when the stream event is called on this call object. And now we are simply going to play the stream into the remote video by just setting the src object to the remote stream. Now remember when the call is not connected then the primary video is the local video. But we want to make the remote video the primary video once the call is connected. So for that I am going to change the class name of the remote video to primary video. And then I'm also going to change the class name on the local video element to secondary video. Now this peer is ready to get any call request and answer it and then play the video streams. But this peer may also want to call someone. So for that we have to write the code and I'm going to do that in a function called a start call this function is going to receive the user id of the other person the person who we want to call and i'm going to name that variable other user id and here also the first step is to get the video stream from the local machine so i'll just quickly do that once i have the local stream i'm going to play it in the local video And then I'm also going to refer the local stream object to this stream object. And now I'm going to create an object named call. And then to call someone, we just have to call the call function on the peer object. In this function, we have to pass two parameters. The first one is going to be the user ID of the person that we want to call. So pass the other user ID variable. And then the second parameter is the stream object. And doing just this will simply send a call request to this user ID. Now once this user ID answers the call with their stream, 
then we have to accept that stream and play it into the remote video in the stream event so i'm going to accept the remote stream and inside this it is going to be the same thing that we have here usually you would write a separate function for code that is same but right now i'm too lazy to do that and i'm just going to copy paste it here the main thing is done now we just have to write two functions that will be capable of muting the audio or the video of the local stream so i'm gonna create a function named toggle video and this function is going to accept a boolean that i'm going to call b and if this b is true then we will play the video otherwise we will stop the video but i'm gonna call this toggle video and toggle audio function in the android kotlin code and through that this variable is going to be a string so this will store the true as a string so i'm gonna check if b is true if it is true then i'm going to get the video tracks from the local stream by just calling this function and this is going to return an array of all the video streams that this stream is playing but here it is just going to be one and we can get that one track from the 0th index and then we can set the enabled property to true on this and that will play the video now copy this line and in the else statement just do the same thing and change the enabled to false now this function can mute the video track copy this function paste it below and now change the name to toggle audio when this function is called then of course we are going to mute the audio or unmute it and to get the audio tracks we just have to call the get audio tracks function and now there is just one thing that i want to do in this js file in the init function i'm going to listen for the on open event on this peer and when this event is fired then we will make a call to a function to a kotlin function in android we will do this when we start writing the android code so for the time being let there be a comment only now i'll show you how to set up the server and then we can test our progress so open up command prompt or terminal and install peer.js with npm i peer and we will install this globally on mac os you will also require to put sudo when you are installing with minus g I have already installed it so I'm not going to do it again. And now to run the server we just have to run the command prjs space port then the port number and then the key key will be prjs and then the path for the server. So here it is slash video call app. And if I press enter then the server will be running. And now in the peer constructor we can pass the custom server's path as an object so host will be the ip address of your server and to get the ip address just fire up the terminal or the command prompt and if you are on windows then you are going to run the command ip config but if you are on a mac then you will run if config pipe grep inet and this will be my ip address i will copy this and then paste it here after this I'll have to pass the port number on which the server is running. My server is running on port 9000 as you can see here. And then the path will be slash video call app because this is what is the path that we entered here. And now just one thing that I need to fix in the call.html before we can run and test our progress. Here I have forgotten to include the style.css in the head. So I will just link it here and now we can go ahead and test our progress. Now after your server is running, go to the folder where your call.html is located, run this file 
and open this again in a separate tab now open the chrome console you can do that by right clicking on the page and then clicking on inspect this will take you to the elements but we will need to go to the console and now we will have to initialize our peer so for now i'm going to just call the init function with the user id 1 and now if we go back to the server then you can see client connected and the client id also gets printed now let's go to the other tab and here also i will initialize with user id 2 and again the id gets printed now we can make a call so from this i'm going to make a call to user 1 and once i make the call you can see the permission is being asked i'm going to allow it and i have my stream coming now i can go to the other tab and you can see this tab is automatically asking for these permissions because we called it from the other tab and i'm just gonna allow it and we have the video streams transferred so if you are getting the same results then you can continue to the next video otherwise fix your bugs.